Eric, we've been walking through a series called Life Lessons and just some things that over our lives, God has been just impressing us. This one is, it is in our lives, but it actually goes way, way, Mm -hmm. way back uh, to the Old Testament. And it's a reminder that God has given his people from the very beginning, which is this idea of don't forget. You want to just kind of expose and flesh that out a little bit? Yeah, well, we see in the the Old Testament the concept of uh, building piles of stones or stones of remembrance. And I think it's hard, you know, I always pictured, you know, stones about this size. They could have been, you know, big, huge boulders. Uh, But it was a place where not just those that experienced the miracle of God or the faithfulness of God could return to and be reminded. And as they witnessed that pile, they could remember when God parted the Jordan and they walked across on dry land. But also their children and their children's children could come back and see it. And that idea of remembrance, the idea, even the commission, uh, remember what God did, is a very significant theme throughout the Old Testament and, of course, in the New Testament. Even the the communion or Lord's Supper meal that we take as a church is a remembrance meal, is to remember what Christ did. It's a pile of stones. That's good. Uh, I, I don't know if this is true, so I, I probably should be careful how I say this, but I remember once hearing or studying or looking it up, or maybe Philip said it, I've, I know, the context is a little vague, but the number one command in scripture is to not fear uh, in terms of repetition. Supposedly, if I remember correctly, the number two is don't forget, Hmm. which I think is interesting because we are so prone as humans to forget. And And there fear. (laughs) And fear. (laughs) But I have no, I, I, I cannot imagine how many times I've said, this was so amazing. I will never forget this moment. And then usually a week or two goes by and it is, it is amazing how, it becomes like jello. It's, it's it's like it just dissipates, and you're like, "Wow, God did some great things." I just don't remember the details, and it is amazing if you don't have some sort of a system to mm-hmm. remember and remind yourselves and rehearse these truths. It it is so easy to forget. I remember being inspired. I I think right when I first became a Christian, I read uh, "Under the Shadow of the Almighty" uh, by Elizabeth Elliot. And about Jim Elliot. It's basically just a compilation of his journal entries. I remember thinking, this is remarkable. So I started keeping a journal. It wasn't even close to as nice as his was. He was such an articulate guy. And but then I started a tradition after I, you know, learned about the piles of stones that I would actually draw, you know, because I used to hand do, I used to hand and then I turned it into a computer-based thing, but used to hand draw a pile of stones. And then I had a little uh, graphic that I would copy paste uh, in there, but that actually significant. The significance of that throughout my spiritual life is remarkable. And like you said, we are prone to forget. It's not just that you know we choose to forget; we will forget if we don't remember. So remembering, like exercise, if you don't exercise, your muscles will atrophy. And it's not that you're choosing for them to atrophy; it's that you're not exercising. The result is that you atrophy, or for us, is that we forget. And so when I go back through my old journals, I'll go through the piles of stones. That's because there's so many pages. It's like, hey, I'm going to skip this. I'm going to go straight to what I told myself years ago. Remember this. And it's interesting, but most of what I read, I didn't remember until I remember. So I have to, I had to have a system, like you're saying, to actually cultivate that remembrance because as sharp as the thought was and as grateful as I was for God's supernatural work, I, as a human, am prone to forget. It's so easy. That's one of the reasons I love our, uh, with all the problems we have in our modern culture with gadgets and gizmos and devices and those distractions, it is amazing how nice it is to be able to jot a note, take a picture, or do something to have these moments where we are reminded of God's goodness and his faithfulness. I think one of the things that I appreciate about you, uh, this is not the highest one, but this is one on the on a list of many, <laughs> but you, you are a man who constantly forces the people around you to remember. Uh, in other words, I feel like every time we get together as a staff meeting, it's always like, all right, before we get into the serious stuff, what, like, hey, let's, let's rehearse. Uh, let's remember this last season. Let's, you know, uh, even just before we start recording, you, you, you have this delightful way of bringing up embarrassing moments, not of yourself, but of everyone yes, else. Yes. And you're like, remember that time? And you throw someone under the bus. But in so doing, it actually becomes this great language of 
uh, of just rehearsing and remembering and having that fondness of friendship and those awkward moments where it's like, yeah, I'm, tr- I'm trying to forget that moment. So thank you for bringing that up again. Uh, it's not having Sandy here anymore now that she's in Belize. Yeah, she that's was my hard. favorite person to remember <laughs> uh, things about. Hey, Sandy, remember when this happened? And she'd always like, oh, don't remember that. <laughs> <clears throat> and, and that's in a goofy sense. Yeah. But I think that's one of the neat things about friendships and yeah. or family or just work environments and just the body of Christ that we need those reminders of not just the fun moments, but even just remembering God's faithfulness for the years, yeah. remembering that that even though I'm in a hard situation right now, God has always proved himself faithful in the past. And if, if I don't recognize or if I don't remember those instances of his faithfulness, mm-hmm. it's hard to forget or it's hard to remember that in this moment where it seems so bleak, he will remain faithful. Mm-hmm. Could you just, we, we, we do this all the time as a ministry and as a church. Do you just want to give some like snippets of mm-hmm. whether it's our alumni calls or our church or even your family of just how... How do we practice this idea of building piles of stones? Because mm-hmm. again, they don't have to be actual piles of stones. It's, but it's it's that purposeful act of remembrance. Yeah, I, I think there's is there's like an individual level that I think each of us need to cultivate. That it isn't dependent upon someone else, but it's it's something we are actively doing. It's like a muscle inside of us. Someone else can't work out for you. You need to work out the remembrance. Other things can help though, like someone in your life that's saying, "Hey, let's remember." And as a father. And as a husband, that's sort of one of my key roles I look at in my family. It, the way we express it in the Ludi home is highlights. It's like, okay, guys, highlights. So when we're on a trip, highlights are like all the time, like maybe even twice a day, like breakfast, highlights for the day, you know? And it's like, uh, I got up. Uh, but I, it's sort of a, it's a, it's a funny thing in our, in our family, but at the same time, it's a serious thing. We remember constantly and then we'll we have something known as it's called a DAC board if any of you would know what that is but it's a screen in our kitchen that actually has a rotation of pictures I mean some of them are like when Leslie and I are young but most of them are when the kids are young and growing up and the family will just sit there and watch it for a long time and we'll remember and it's a constant rehearsal and then you'll hear these conversations oh remember when that happened because we have about i don't know 1500 to 2000 pictures in this rotation right so it there's a lot of options of what you can remember and so you have the individual level which is oftentimes like a journal uh, for me but i have a lot of different ways that i remember i remember a lot of times through my sermons which i organize very specifically in my and and through daily thunder so i can see i, I just do a survey over topics and they will trigger remembrance and so that's it's even how i build my keynotes for my messages is i build them on trigger thoughts like this will trigger this thought and so if i know how to trigger thoughts which is part of the study of how we each work individually because if i get one one time i inherited leslie's keynote she was it was a set apart conference and i don't know if she was sick or what was going on but she said eric i need you to finish this and I walk up onto stage. I think it was a woman's conference too. And I'm like all awkward up there. And I'm thinking, I know the topic, but I have her keynote. And her keynote makes no sense to me because it's not the way my brain works. It's not, it doesn't trigger my brain. It triggers hers. And each of us is, is like that. There are certain things that cause us to remember. And when we know what those are, we want to prosper that. So in the church side, we will oftentimes just have to, you know, like before Thanksgiving, I think it was a Sunday before Thanksgiving, we had an entire service that was dedicated to remembrance. I think we had, was that the sermon service that we had nine people come mm-hmm. up and just remember this past year? So we just picked nine people from our church and we just had them, whether we say prepare, it wasn't long uh, that they were delivering, but, you know, it could be two to three minutes of just remembering what God did in this past year very precious. It's amazing to even listen to other people because it triggers your remembrance. And so when someone is remembering, it has a tendency to cause you to exercise the same muscle. On the alumni prayer call, we do a lot of remembrance, and that's a lot of fun. Uh, And uh, I think just that exercise amongst us, just like, you know, our team, our our leadership team, or even when we get together with the bigger group of our our, our work crew or, or whatever, that we are, you know, constantly trying to remember what God has done in our lives. I think it's so good. And I, I and I, we've already said this, but because we're so prone to for, to forget and, and because we're it's such a hard thing to remember, I, I think one of the ways that God has been proving himself throughout scripture is if you know my character, you know my nature, you'll know that 
it is always constant. And I think there's something just beautiful about just that that testimony of God's faithfulness. Like we read Christian biographies all the time. And in a weird sense, that becomes piles of stones. Mm -hmm. Because even though they're not my experiences, I'm seeing this through scripture, through Christian history, through just the testimony of the believers around us, of just seeing God prove himself, seeing his faithfulness, seeing his goodness, seeing his his love and his mercy. And it, it it's a boon to the soul of with whatever I'm dealing with right now, I know I can keep walking mm -hmm. forward. Do you have a quick practical? We're, we're in this season when this is being released between Thanksgiving and Christmas. New Year's is coming up. So as as we're getting ready for 2024 and the years beyond, what what can we be doing? Say someone's listening and saying, okay, I need to remember more. Yay, I'll remember. The problem is, is we say that in two weeks will go by and we're like, I, I haven't remembered yeah. to remember. <laughs> <clears throat> so is there something that we can start doing practically? I mean, journaling is probably a very simple one yeah. where it's just like, it doesn't have to be very long, even just bullet point kind of things. Yeah. But do you have any other thoughts of like, how can we practically apply this idea so that we don't forget in the days to come? Yeah, it, it's a really hard thing to know how to speak for what someone else should do because we're all somewhat different in how we engage with memory. And that's, I used to teach memory, not this kind of memory, you know, where you're remembering just events in your life or the faithfulness of God, but how to remember things, whether it's names of people or, or whatever. And exercise and consistency is the key, just like for most things. When you first start, it's actually hard. And I always say the third day of any, an, any new exercise routine is usually when people give up. You have your New Year's resolution, you get your, th on that third day, you end up sleeping in. And the same thing can happen here. And so to create a discipline, you wanna start simple. You don't want to overcomplicate it. Like I'm gonna write four pages of notes every day. Uh, I remember hearing about John Quincy Adams that went on some uh, ambassador tour to Russia and he wrote, you know, just like pages and pages every day. And I was like, that's what I'm gonna do. And he became president. And, oh, that was a mistake. Anytime you overcommit or bite off more than you can chew, you, you're more vulnerable or more prone to failing in the process. But if you do a small achievable step forward, a small achievable goal, like you said, it might be one thing that you remember every day and you have maybe a, an open document on your computer and you write it in next to the date. And if it's a significant thing, have some kind of little thing, even if it's in parentheses, pile of stones, <laughs> bold. In other words, something you can see and you start practicing the way that, I would say, and I've said this to many people, you want to be a great writer? Journal. And learn to articulate what's going on inside of you, what's going on in your life. Notice things, observe things. That is what makes a writer in the first place. So a journal, I would say, is what made me a writer to start with, is just beginning to keep a journal. And even though the writing style in a journal and the writing style in a book might be different, it's the same process of taking from what is inside coordinating your thoughts into, it used to be a pen. Remember the days when we used to write with pens? Uh, and But now it's into a keyboard. And so I would say to actively engage in a small step would be of the utmost importance. That's really good. And if I can give one other final thought too, just in this idea of remembering, it's really good not just to, to record, uh, whether it's photos, whether it's literal stones. We, we have, we know people who, you know, write something on a literal stone and uh -huh. Or, or it's a, a board or a you know a wall in their house or uh, I think at one point you had talked about a, 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 a walking a, path. A walking path. Yeah, with all the key moments of <clears> what God a, has done. This is a cool idea. Great too. idea, never did it. <laughs> <laughs> Those are my best ideas. <laughs> but whatever the method is, I think just one principle is, okay, if you journal, great. If you take photos, great. But there has to come a point where we have to go back and review those. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're not actually remembering. I mean, you're you're preparing yourself to remember, but you're yep. not doing the work of remembrance. And so maybe if I can just encourage everyone, almost off of what you said, one, take a small step and do mm -hmm. something. And wouldn't it be neat at the end of 2024 to be able to look back and go, look at all these, whether it's once a week or, or every day, just look at God's faithfulness mm -hmm. or here's a scripture that I read and here, you know, here's, a, here's the moment of the day uh, that, that God moved or God spoke. That would be amazing, but we just need to make sure we're actually going back and doing that. And for those who have had something up to this point, or maybe even if you haven't, I think it'd be really good over this next couple of weeks to purposely have some time where we just be still before the Lord and just say, all right, let's walk through this last year. Let's walk through the last season and just 
meditate upon God's goodness. And <clears throat> uh, one of my favorite Psalms is Psalm 136. And it's amazing how the psalmist is recounting the history of Israel, the good, the bad, and the ugly. But with every single point, the declaration is his loving kindness endures forever. Mm-hmm. And I think it'd be really good just for all of us at some point before the end of the year is just to set our lives afresh before the Lord and to review and to remember and remember that whether it's good times, whether it's bad times, or whether it's ugly times, his loving kindness, his faithfulness, his mercy still endures because he is good. Amen.